Welcome back. Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. Uh, all the markets in, uh, well, the Dow's down 30, pretty much where it ended the day yesterday. The uh, S&P barely down, fractionally. NASDAQ's up 10. Both the S&P and the Dow were down uh, yesterday, of course. We did, get, uh, we did get to see oil come below hundred dollars a barrel yesterday, or at least it closed hundred dollars a barrel yesterday. We also uh, are seeing some issues with uh, gold. Gold's uh, not doing uh, very well. Uh, it took a little bit of a run there, but uh, it has pulled back as well. Oil right now is back over hundred. I'm sorry, it's hundred oh six right now. Um, so above where it closed yesterday, gold is at twelve ninety four down, down uh, slightly. Silver's at twenty twenty five, also down and moving down. All the agricultural commodities and positive, right? Yeah, all of them. Uh, let's see, one of them's red. Who is it? Cotton. Cotton is down. Everything else is uh, in positive territory. So uh, that's where we are. Natural gas at 4.95 right now. Natural gas at 4.95. So headed back up. We did see a little bit of a reprieve. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's not going to get passed along to all of us at a heat with natural gas. Anyway, gasoline gasoline continues. Commodity gasoline continues to move upward. 866-300-9298. We're going to get back to the phones. You're listening to Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. Let me go to uh, Geraldine. I can't see the whole name here. Geraldine from Texas, I think. Hi. Hi, Geraldine. Um, How are you? Thank you so much for your program. I've learned so much. Um, I am 65 in excellent health and a physical therapist, there's employment almost anywhere I would want it in the country because, uh, you know, there's just not yeah. enough therapists. Yeah. And I'm wondering if I should start my Medicare, I mean, my Social Security checks when I um, become of the proper age in, in uh, October of this year, mm -hmm. where I'll be 66, or should I just keep working and and start collecting that later. Well, in, in my opinion, uh, most people are going to disagree with me on this, but I would not collect till I was 70 and I'd keep working. I mean, that's what I plan on doing. That's what I tell people to do. Because here's the thing. I mean, you're in great, you're in great shape. You're in good physical health. Uh, it sounds like you, you don't mind working. Um, so I, you know, it's worth the 30% increase you're going to get every month if you wait until you're 70. Now, you have to okay. take it at 70, but it's you're going to get about a 30% increase every month. Now, the reason, Geraldine, everybody you talk to is going to disagree with that is because they look at the amount of money in which you receive over your lifetime. And, of course, you will receive more money over your lifetime if you start collecting sooner rather than later. Right. My mindset is I really don't care how much I get over my lifetime. I am not about to be concerned about accumulating wealth when I'm 65. If I haven't yet, it's too late for that. What I am going to be concerned with when I'm 70 is how much money I have coming in every month. It's all I'm going to care about. I'm not going to care about the fact that, oh, if, had I collected earlier, I'd have more money. I would have made more money from, from the government or would have collected more. I don't care about that. What I care about is how much I have coming in every month to pay my bills. So uh -huh. the 30% increase, and I'm guessing in my case, it's 32%. I, I don't know, you know uh, what it is in your case, but... It'll be about 800 a month more if I wait till 70. Yeah. I mean, to me, you're going to feel so much. Look, it, it, forget about how much you can get. Unless, for some reason, you you don't want to work, you're ready to retire, you don't, you're, you're, you're in poor health, and you just want to get out of the rat race, so to speak, or whatever, then that's a different story. But, man, if, you're, if you can continue to work and you're in great shape, uh, you know, I would just, I'd hold off as long as you possibly can. And again, you know, I get people that, that want to collect, I'm going to collect when I'm 62 because I'm going to get so much more money. Uh, I, I tell you this, when everybody is 80, the only thing they're going to care about is how much money they got coming in every month. They're not going to care yeah. about anything else. So that's my advice. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome, Geraldine. Keep plugging. Keep working. Uh, I love it. It's great stuff. Keeps you healthy. Keeps you young. And, uh, you know, we, we all need to have uh, a little bit of that attitude. It's great stuff. 866-300-9298. 866-300-9298. Let me go to John. Let me slow it down. 866 300 92 You're listening to Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. Uh, the Dow is now down 83 NASDAQ's down 11, S&P down 7. I'm, I'm just wondering, could they be thinking the same thing I'm thinking about the retail sales numbers for the month of December, the retail sales numbers for the month of January, even though we do have a legitimate weather excuse for the month of January. But Christmas, come on, retail sales numbers are negative. I don't know if you remember this, but back in early December or November, I said to someone, I believe there's going to be consolidation in the retail sector. There will be. There will be. Because uh, these businesses are not going to be able to survive. Means bigger layoffs, more people unemployed. Bigger problems for the consumer, bigger problems for the economy. I've got some numbers that I'm going to bring you at the top of the hour about wages and productivity that might shock you a little bit. I got I have to admit, I was a little bit surprised. I, I knew that it was close, didn't realize uh, it was like this, and I'll go over that with you at the top of the hour. Let me go to John in Alabama. Hey, John. Good morning, Mr. C. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, John. Uh, well, my question for you is that I'm 34 years old, and mm-hmm. uh, my company that I work for now will match 50% percent of what I put in up to 8% of my salary. Okay. Uh, it's the first question that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second part of that is, is I'm sure you're aware of 401ks give you sort of a, they manage it option where you can be conservative, moderate, or aggressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do you recommend that or do you recommend sort of managing that on your own? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I actually have a third question. I used to work in local government in another state, and I had a 401k with them. And would you would you think it would be best to roll that into my current 401k, or to roll that into like a traditional IRA? Okay. Last question. Uh, I would say roll it into your 401k if they allow you to do it. Okay. So if you're able to do it, and most companies allow it, I would definitely roll it into that. Uh, two reasons. One is you get it consolidated. You know where it is. Secondly, any uh, dividends, interest, uh, and gain that you earn in your 401k now gets compounded on a larger number. And that's always a good thing. So I would, I would definitely do that. As far as uh, the, the um, match, I would say uh, to you, John, my, and encourage you to try to do every as close to 8% as you possibly can and uh, continue to do that. And if you can't do it yet, work up to it. Uh, but, you know, if you can get that 8% in there, it is a great deal. You've just made 50% on your money. It doesn't get too much better than that. I put a dollar in. The company puts 50 cents in. I just made 50% and I haven't even started to invest yet. And I've already made 50%. So it is, it is a great deal. I always tell people you absolutely have to take the free money because that's what it is. You have to take it now. And that's a very good match, by the way, that's You must be working for a, you know, a conscientious, a good company. So that's, that's a very good match. The other thing I would say to you, now I just said you just made 50% on your money, right? So I wouldn't, I don't know that you need to be aggressive. I'm okay with picking this conservative, moderate, aggressive kind of portfolio and forgetting about it. You're 35 years old, uh, so I'm okay with that. But I would probably choose to go into a moderate portfolio because, again, you already made 50%. So don't take too much risk in and lose some of that 50%. Take a little bit of a middle-of-the-road risk by being moderate. Now, you don't have to be as concerned about risk 
as you know, a, a, you know, a guy that's 55 or 60, obviously. But at the same time, why, why do it? You've got 50, you're making 50% already. Uh, you, you continue to put in and buy in. And I say, take a moderate risk. Yeah, the aggressive portfolio is going to have years that it does 35% compared to your moderate portfolio that may be doing 19 or 20%, you'll, you'll be thinking, well, I should have, I should have done, uh, that's only one year. The, the aggressive portfolio is going to have years where it's down 30% and you're only going to be down 15%. So that's why you're doing the moderate portfolio because again, you're already making 50%. So yeah, I would be okay. Throw it in the moderate portfolio and forget about it. Uh, continue to contribute as bad as the news may get, John, uh, markets going down and so on and so forth. Keep putting that money in. Don't stop because the mistake that so many people make, and I find in particular young, young people like yourself make is they get into a little bit of a concern and get caught up in all the bad news and at the very time they should be increasing what they put in because things are tanking, they stop. And that is just a hard, that just kills your portfolio. Uh, so you need to continue to just, and you know, I, I, I'll tell you, as, as silly as it sounds, um, don't even open your statement. Don't even look at it. Just get into the discipline of continuing to put in what you can put in. You're 35 by the time you retire, you'll be in great shape. Right, right. Now, would you would you put in more than the eight percent, or would oh, you just do up to the eight percent? No, I if I could put in more than eight percent, I would do it because there may be a circumstance in your life uh, that you won't be able to. So, let's say you're putting in ten. There may be a circumstance in your life where you need a little bit of cash flow for a year and you only start putting in eight or you cut it back to eight or seven. So in, you know, when, during the good years and the good times when you can put more in, absolutely do it. Put as much in as you possibly can. Right, right. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate your advice. All right, John. Thank you for your call and thanks for listening. I appreciate that. 866-392-98. Let me go. Do we, do you think we can get another call in here, Devin? What time are we Okay, let me go to Jacob in Ohio. Hey, Jacob. Hello. How are you? Uh, good. How are you? Thank you for taking my call. Sure thing, you, brother. Thank you. Um, I just my question is, um, I, I feel kind of torn. I know what the Bible says about tithing, and yes, I also know what the Bible says about debt. Mm -hmm. um, I currently have like twenty five hundred dollars in credit card debt, and mm -hmm. I don't know what's Biblically wise, um, practical, what what have you? Um, what should I pay off first? Or I mean, should I tithe and pay off? Or I, I'm just I don't really make that much money, um, so I'm just kind of torn as far as that. And um, also, I haven't really, like I said, I have a thousand dollars in savings, but I don't really have anything kind of like what you guys talk about a portfolio. Sure. And I'm just trying to look for the future. Um, you know, where's a good place to start for somebody who hasn't really started? Great questions, Jacob. Um, first of all, keep listening as you get learn more and more because uh, someday you'll be in that place of investing. Here's what I say to you about the tithing. And then I'll tell you how to start your investment strategy. Um, don't, whatever you do, don't rob yourself of the act of worship that tithing is. Don't, don't, don't take that away from yourself. And, you know, it is such a blessing. You know, God speaks so much about money because he knows how hard it is for us to let go of it. And, and I think that when we let go of something and give it over to uh, give, give thanks to God for, you know, what we do have, our opportunities to work, our opportunities to earn a living and, and the provision that he's given us because we have a loaf of bread on the table. All, but make sure that you give back. So my answer to that is that, yes, you give and you pay your debt at the very same time. I mean, that it, it just goes without saying, I promise you, you won't ever regret that. That's the one th promise I can make. N the other thing is, 
uh, is how do you get started? And Jacob, what I want you to do is I want you to keep listening because we got to come up against this break here. But when I get back, I want I want to talk to people that are in your exact same situation. I know we have many listeners like that, and talk again about w- what you need to do. How do you get started? Where do you start? And, uh, you know, what what you need to do. And I'll talk about that right after the break. You're listening to Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. Uh, We're coming up on this uh, break. As soon as we get back, we're going to get to the phones. 